Welcome to my engraving studio. I'm Kari Greger, the artist engraver. So glad you could join me today. In this video, part one, I am hand engraving a Colt third generation single action army pistol, starting with the cylinder. Let's get into it. This piece arrived all wrapped up very carefully, nicely packed. It's a beautiful piece. Going to be a delight to engrave this. Usually we have communicated enough that I know what the owner wants, but before I start drawing, I like to get the preferred design elements established. No surprises. I had done a pair of Colts a while back and the owner of the, the piece that I'm going to be working on liked the style of the engraving. So that gets the first element out of the way, the scroll. I'll just use the same scroll that I had on that pair of Colts. Second design element is the trim. I emailed him several ideas for trim and he picked one of these. Why don't you comment below and tell me which one you like. Third design element is a geometric pattern and we'll talk about that later. I'm going to apply my Chinese white which is a white watercolor paint. I use that so I can see the pencil marks of my design. I find the center of the first flute and then put the circle template on there and we are off to the races with drawing. That's all I use. A pencil, a template for circles, and a ruler and I can get all my design elements in. I just simply draw in the scroll. I didn't show the drawing of the first scroll because it's hard to concentrate on design when you're worried about camera angle. I snapped a couple of pictures, sent them off to the owner, and he replied, Perfect. It's exactly what I want. Go ahead. That's the permission I need to get started. This is my Lindsay Air Engraver tool. Uh, it's operated by a foot pedal, and uh, it, it's like a little jackhammer inside that makes the bit go back and forth, and it's, it can hammer a whole lot faster than I can could even possibly do it and it makes engraving similar to drawing but in the smoothness but certainly not in the technique. You need a whole different set of skills to operate an engraver. Finding this video interesting? Be sure to give me a quick like below. Thumbs up! This is showing the cutting of the first piece. So I, I'm operating the speed of the hammer with the foot pedal and I am moving the work into the graver by rotating the vise. So my left hand is operating the vise. My right foot is operating the speed, the gas pedal. And then the right hand is holding the graving tool and it controls the angle of the bevel, the deepness of the cut, the direction. So it it's like like drawing in that sense where I'm using my hand, but it it's rather like um, my husband always says, it's like trying to sign your name while moving the paper into the pencil. So you have to really get used to it. But it's another tool. I mean, I'm I'm an artist. I use many different media and uh, this is another tool. Nice swirl going. This is one of the things I like about showing the uh, cylinder is that you can see a lot better how the engraving goes because it's a smaller venue. When you get the bigger pieces, they go out of focus, the circle, you know, it's not so compact and centered. All right, now we're gonna draw the other side. Oh my God. Draw. This scroll design has two scrolls that are facing each other that are in a mirror image. And the line that I'm drawing right now at this point is the line that connects them, the two flutes together. You see that that's bottom line there? 
this is it completed. Now we have to get everything else looking so that it's just a mirror image of each other. So I measure the one side and I'm creating, I'm going back and forth and comparing it to what I already cut and making it look as much like it as possible. I just love scroll. I love the kind of the geometric, um, it's, it's got a resonance about it that it's satisfying. It makes you feel content and complete. There's something about a scroll, that geometric, that perfect unity as, it's, as it goes in on itself. It's lovely. Anyway, we're going to get the, um, the bud before the leaf equal in size and the flare out the back. That's got to be the same as well. So everything has to be exactly the mirror image. I've got more pictures of pieces I've done on my website, theartistengraver.com, on Instagram and Facebook. Check the description below for links. I've sped this up because otherwise I think it's boring to watch me draw, but lots of people seem to like it. Now here I'm putting in the leaf. Nice. Nice to see that. I do draw. I do have that gift. This is one of my pieces of watercolor that I did a while ago. So if you're ever interested in portraits, I'm your girl. Here we are just finishing up the drawing of the scroll. Snap a picture. That's sent off to the owner. Once we get the okay, here we go to cut. This part is one of the most important was to get that the graver settled in the groove of the previous cut because we want to make it look like it's one fluid motion. So you can't force it. You have to let the graver sit in the cut and back a little ways and then come at it like you're coming out of that same groove. Um, that way you don't get multiple lines and it looks very smooth. That's a little trick that yeah, you might want to file away. If you have to continue a graver, you have to let the, the graver sit in the groove and find the, the bevel. Don't try and force it. Uh, this is actual time. This is not sped up. You can hear the foot pedal going and you can hear the, the graver being uh, sped up or slowed down. You know, that buzzing sound. Well, it's, it's either engraving or, you know, you're cutting somebody's teeth, I guess. <laughs> Got to get the burr off of there. We're going to come right around. These are the longest cuts coming around. And it's nice to break them up a little bit with buds or, you know, little swirls and leaves coming off of the scroll. It makes it much more decorative, but it also helps break up that single cut because you know you, you get tired and you have to take a break and and you want it to be smooth so it's better to break it with a bud than to try and continue the line on this is going to be probably the longest and most difficult cut of doing one of these flutes is to come around here because there is no break once you get past a point where you're going to add buds you there is no break so watch i engrave i engrave and then i stop moving the tool and then move you know re relocate my hand on the vise i don't continue cutting without the left hand on the vise so if, if i have to move it otherwise you get a jerk you have the two in order to be smooth you stop your your uh, graving tool and then move your hand and then continue. That's the process. Oh, you wouldn't do that. So now we'll have to put a bullet in this cranium. And we'll never know who the fastest really is now, will we? So this is sped up, oh, three times speed, I think. Two or three times speed. But you can see how all the cuts are being made. It really is a coordination thing. You've got to move the left hand, right hand, and a foot pedal going. So quite a symphony of movement. Okay. 
Here we go, get in those buds. You can see how every turn has to go around when there's a, the whole wheel has to turn, the whole vise has to go around. It takes a drop of water and we wash it off. There we go. Mirror facing scroll. Looking good. Now, going to put in the dotted background. You've got one hammer hit for each dot. And I experimented quite a bit with different angles on how to get this because every time I get my hand in there, the camera goes out of focus. Anyway, there, that looks like it's done. It gives it some relief, some background without cutting out metal. It's a really nice method. Okay, we've got a, two more pairs of facing scroll to finish up. Let's get going. One's over, boys. Unbuckle them. Let's shoot it out. All right, Shanghai. Go ahead, draw. All of you. And the drawing of it. It has to match. Once again, I'm comparing to the piece beside. I'll be comparing the other one to the, the piece facing. It just is a lot of measuring back and forth. And I find this, even though I'm drawing, drawing everything by hand, I can tend to do that faster than trying to align something. I know somebody else had sent something about, oh, you know, you can do this by clear tape and you put, you know, something in the, in the, uh, the grooves and you take it and then you can transfer your design. Um, I, I feel like I can draw it faster than, than spending all that time trying to get everything aligned and transferred. You know, I have to do the alignment anyway when I draw and then I just draw it in. It, it's, it's a lot easier for me than fussing with tape. I don't know. If I had something that had a lot of repetition of something difficult, maybe I would go with the transfer tape idea. But drawing is my thing. So here we go, cutting the next flute. You see the the tool is moving, and once again, this is this is in regular time. This one isn't sped up. The tool is moving, and every time I go around a curve, I have to move that. Here we go, all the way around, and I have to move the tool. I stop and then move my hand and then keep going you know sometimes it looks pretty fast here because I, I, I go, I'm getting very fast with moving my left hand to a new position on the vise yeah talk about coordination well, there's something quite almost athletic about this Well, I, I play piano too, so I'm used to doing multiple things with both hands. Here we go with more dot work. Everyone gets a hammer piece, and there I was going, oh, my vice is coming, it's getting in there, and it's causing the camera to go out of focus. So try, try a different position, and <laughs> you can see the hammer. The thing about the, the dot work is that the, the punch wants to bounce, so you have to get the punch flat against the surface and you have to hit it flat with your hammer. There we go. Look at this. It's all done. Ah, oh, there's something quite satisfying about that, isn't there? Look at those three pairs of facing scroll. Something a little different than what you see normally. I like your style, dude. Now we're going to get into that trim. I tried it on a piece of paper first, and then I drew it on the scroll. I had to make sure that it matches up. We don't want any gaps. The measuring of this has to be really specific because it has to be, the leaves have to be the, the right length all the way around so that they meet and it just keeps going. It's, you know, a circle of leaves that doesn't stop and you can't see where I started and you can't see where I stopped. So that was, the drawing has to be careful and it has to be mapped out ahead of time. Once I've done that and I snapped a picture and then I sent it off to him, which is the picture that you saw, and uh, the owner agreed. He thought that looked good. So now we cut. 
And like I said, the, one of the things that's important about this is that you cannot see where the scroll stops and where it started. It does not have a beginning point. It goes all the way around the cylinder and uh, with no brakes and everything the same size. It has to be well planned out. And we keep coming around all the way with the graver and getting those nice leaves the way they're supposed to be beveled and I'm cutting a round surface coming down like this. Boy, you know, you, you know if you're, uh, your tool has to be sharp. I, I haven't shown any sharpening clips in this because I'll do that another time, but you have to keep your tool sharp. A dull tool will skip and skate and then you get scratches that you don't want. We want the scratches in the correct place. <laughs> Next video, I walk through how to get a piece engraved from idea to completion back in your hands. Seven easy steps. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you'll be notified when that video is posted. I'm glad you saw samples of the trim ahead of time and you saw it on the paper there briefly because seeing the pencil marks on the cylinder, it's really hard to photograph. It's hard to get an idea. You know, the, uh, the owner, I, I, I compliment him because he was going a little bit on faith. You cannot see everything that I had dr drawn on there in the photograph. And once it's done, we're gonna wash that off. And this is going to be complete. It doesn't need any dot work, but there we go consecutive leaf scroll all the way around all the leaves evenly spaced and it makes a nice nice trim for this cylinder final thing that we're going to do is put on some renaissance wax this wax polish it, it actually smells like shoe polish if you remember the old times shoe polish but this is a clear wax and it is a preservative i have cut through the bluing on this piece now, the owner has plans to do something more permanent with a clear Cerakote, but this wax will keep those cuts fresh and keep them from oxidizing. We don't want this piece getting rusty. The engraving looks great and we want to keep it fresh. Any general questions? Ask me below in the comments section. I'll be happy to answer. It makes a great start for this Colt third generation single action army pistol. Shoot me an email if you are interested in getting some gun engraving for yourself. I can ballpark an estimate for you. It makes a great gift to get or to give. Click this link if you are looking for some ideas on pistols and this link if you are interested in rifles or shotguns. See you next time.